Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Revel's Deep Dive into Inventory and Purchase Orders. I am your host for today, Matt Liano. I'm one of the product trainers here at Revel. I am flying solo today, so for any questions that come up during the presentation, uh, there may be a slight delay until I'm able to take a look at them, until we pause for questions. Um, before I get started, I just want to be sure that audio is working okay. Looks like it is. And let's take a look at the agenda. Actually, before that, um, we are excited to announce here, if you did not get any of the communication yet, your resources have been updated with our newly launched Revel University. So all of the training videos that you may be used to looking up um, in the resources page, you'll see the button there that I've highlighted for you in the bottom right hand corner is actually labeled Revel University now. So the videos are taking on a little bit of a different persona, um, a little bit of a uh, different organization. So you'll see there on the left there, um, you can look at it by, by vertical. You have retail, quick service, table service. Um, the search function, of course, at the very top there still works the same. So if you type in a subject or a topic, you'll see all the videos and articles related to that specific subject. So I uh, encourage you to take a look at Revel University. We're really excited to bring it to you, and we're going to continue updating it as we, we move along here. Um, in addition to that, webinars will, st will also be located in Revel University. You'll notice at the very bottom of that screenshot on the left, there's a little icon uh, to the very right of that row of icons. It's, that's the webinar icon. So you'll still be able to access these after um, the webinar is finished because they are still being recorded. All right, so look at the agenda for today. We're gonna go over a high-level view overview of inventory. We're gonna go into each of the inv inventory tabs that are in your management console. We're gonna look at that relationship between the inventory movements, vendors, and purchase orders. And then we're gonna go into some of the 225 enhancements that relate to inventory. All right, so as a high-level over overview, of course, we're familiar with this inventory cycle. Um, we're going through the purchase orders, receiving what's there or what arrives, wasting anything that needs to be wasted. You sell, you get low stock, low stock threshold alerts, and then you reorder and continue that cycle. So this cycle is what will follow in kind of the st structure of what we're gonna see uh, in terms of how Revel deals with this cycle. So starting out in your inventory tab, you have a couple of new buttons here, so I wanted to go over all of the secondary navigation you see here below the black bar. Your products and ingredients, of course, you can manage the inventory on each of those levels, either products or ingredients. We have now prep recipes, which allows you to run a batch recipe to more accurately track inventory and waste. And we will go into detail about this uh, a little bit later. We have your vendors. This is how you're going to keep track of who you buy from, all of their contact information, any uh, shipping terms that you need to keep track of will be kept in the vendor section. Reorder is the area where it will identify low stock. You'll also be able to create purchase orders directly from the reorder page, which is nice. So if you're looking for a type of report where it shows you everything that needs to re be reordered, it'll be in this section here. It is really handy as well because you can check off multiple items at one time and generate the PO right away. Purchase orders. Um, this is where you will keep track of all of the purchase orders that are created within Revel. So you can see all the statuses of where a certain order is in terms of the cycle. The RMA, or in this case, Re Return Merchandise Authorization, this is where you'll keep track of all of the returns you make through Revel um, to make sure that everything is recorded. The shipping address here on the very right, that is for your business. So whatever you want to automatically appear on the PO whenever you generate the order, it'll automatically pop up. I would go in here and fill out your information so you don't have to continually fill it out each and every time you do a new PO. You have your transfer icon here, so you can transfer inventory between establishments as long as uh, those barcodes or SKUs are matching between the two establishments. And then you have your physical inventory. So this is a new feature as well. This ties into the inventory app, which we will go into detail a little bit later. 
All right, so these action buttons here, um, they actually appear, so if you look at my product inventory screenshot at the bottom in the upper right, there's a button or a checkbox here that says show all actions. When you check that box, you will get these additional actions here on your inventory page. So each is indicative of the column title up here. So cardboard box, you receive, wasted your garbage can, transfer, actual inventory counts, uh, resetting cost. You can also reset a, a product and you can print tags. Um, printing tags is, is really useful from the back end when you want to print them all out in bulk. So you don't have to do it one by one from the front end. Uh, once again, here I am highlighting this show all actions button. And for the large quantity of price tags, uh, you can print them from the products page. You want to expand show all actions and print tags. The dialog box that pops up here in the bottom, it's going to ask how many, uh, you know, the quantity of what you want to print. And it, it's also possible to print the tags immediately when you receive the inventory. Uh, clicking the print button will show the received items tags button, or you can open the PO and see all receipts. This allows you to receive products and then immediately print the tags. One note here if you're, is if you're printing from the management console, this will require a Dymo label printer uh, to be connected to, the, to your computer. Um, later on down the line when we look at shelf label tags, it is a different printer. I just want to point that out. But this one from the back end for uh, price tags is going to be the Dymo printer. All right, so with, with vendors here. Cr before creating a PO, you want to create your vendors. Um, and the process is really simple. Starting out in the inventory tab, click on vendors and just fill out the information. It looks exactly how it does here on the bottom right screenshot. So you have your uh, required information as indicated by the asterisk and then everything else you want to populate on the PO. You can also put in, you know, there's a free text area for shipping terms, uh, your FOB terms, anything like that. In addition to that, once you've created vendors, attaching the products or ingredients will also be integral when you're creating your POs. Uh, so in the vendor details page, after you've added your vendor, at the very bottom, you'll see the attach others or attach products, attach ingredients option. So you can attach the same product or ingredient to multiple vendors if you do purchase you know, the same product from multiple vendors, depending on price. And you want to, I mean, you could do this entire process through Excel. And you don't have to do it directly from this option here. But this will also tie into the reorder tab. So when you are creating a PO or re reordering, it'll reference what's attached to those vendors so it knows exactly what you can reorder or uh, uh, put on the PO from that vendor. So with purchase orders here, so now we've, we've excelled into the inventory tab once again, and now we're in the purchase orders section. What I wanted to point out here are the statuses. Of course, there are a bunch of filter options here, so you can really take a look at where the POs are at and separate them or organize them how you want. The status is here. So there's a couple of statuses to look out for when you're creating and going through this cycle. You'll have new, it's a brand new PO. You'll also have one that's sent. So when you email a PO from the system, it will be marked as sent. There's also a button on the PO itself that says mark as sent. So let's say maybe you didn't email this particular PO for some reason, maybe you printed it out and sent it or it handed it to the uh, vendor, then you can still mark it as sent. You'll also have partially received, fully received, and finalized. The invoice status is as well, you will see uninvoiced, partially invoiced, and fully invoiced as well as finalized when everything is indeed finalized. So moving on into the reorder section here, this is where I mentioned that as long as those items are attached to those vendors, if there is a low stock threshold alert, it will pop up in a, kind of a red, pink highlighted uh, section there. So you can pick and choose what exactly you want to order. And if you wanted to reorder everything, you can click on the box that checks everything off in that section to reorder. 
When you click on the generate PO for that section, you will get a pop-up window that says create new PO or create new PO and receive. What's the difference? So create new PO allows you to begin the entire reordering process and keep track of it, keep record of it in Revel. Create new PO and receive is useful if you already have the product. So let's say you went out and you bought it, but you do want to record in your system that there was a purchase order for it, you would create new PO and receive. All right, so from this screen here, the items associated to the vendor that need to be reordered will automatically populate in the items, uh, item receipts field that we have highlighted here. If you set up the default quantity and the cost, the PO automatically pulls that info, so it'll show up in your quantity and cost fields. But notice they are editable, so you can go in here and adjust quantities and costs if necessary. And if you want, it, if you want to add in additional items to the PO from the vendor, of course, there's the add item button right below that, so it tacks on more line items for additional products. Okay. Um, when you do click add item, on the right hand side there's a little uh, screenshot there. It shows you a really easy search function. Just type it in and you'll be able to add it. You'll also notice you can add in products or invent or I'm sorry, products or ingredients. Um, in the search drop down, it'll explicitly say if you're searching for ingredients or if you're searching for products or both. All right, so we've We've created our PO, or we've we've clicked the reorder section to gener generate our PO, and it's been sent. And let's say we receive our products, and we're ready to receive. So from the section here, uh, you're going to go to the purchase orders again, and the first icon, the cardboard box representing the receive function once again, um, this will pop up in the received window, and it will default to the reorder quantities already set when creating the purchase order. So we're receiving whatever we ordered here in the bottom right. And once again, before you finalize any of this or indicate what was received, you're able to edit the quantities here. So if you didn't, if you didn't receive the full quantity of what you ordered, you can adjust it accordingly. All right, and going back to those statuses, so let's say you did partially receive it or partially invoice it. The invoice will remain open and indicated as partially received or partially invoiced until you actually go in and complete the invoice by putting in that second invoice number or um, receiving the, the remainder of the inventory when it does finally arrive. So when we get to finalizing the PO, you can always go back in, actually before finalizing, if, if you did go back in to edit the partially received invoice or partially received PO, you'll always be able to go into the action section, click the pencil icon, and input the second invoice number. When you're ready to finalize and everything's been accounted for and you go in to edit the PO again, the finalize button is available to you now. And this is, at this point, you are notified saying, hey, uh, a finalized purchase order cannot be edited. Are you sure you want to finalize it? So there is a step there before actually finalizing it, letting you know that this is permanent. And then when you click, click yes, all the status will change to fi finalized. Uh, before I go into receiving inventory in the PS, uh, POS, I just want to check questions here. Uh, an item can, yes, an item can be, well, actually, I'm sorry, the question is, can an item be attached to more than one vendor? The answer to that is yes. Um, it is done on the vendor level. When you don't open up that vendor, you'll click attach either for the ingredients or the products sides of, of the vendor information, and you basically just search through your inventory of products and, and ingredients, and you can attach it to multiple vendors. There's another question here from Steve. Are there any plans to integrate with broadband suppliers such as Cisco Foods to electronically send POs? Um, Steve, I'm not aware of any integrations like that in the pipeline. Um, the extent of that right now is just the ability to email the PO to whichever email address you designate for your vendor. But just, just 
like any email with an attachment, it is just that. It's just the PO with the attached or attached to an email. Um, as far as the like a, a more detailed order form that automatically would go to Cisco and be fulfilled that way, I have not uh, heard of any plans for that type of integration yet. All right. So going into receiving inventory on the POS, um, to start off, to do any kind of inventory management on the iPad POS, this is a role permission. So I wanted to highlight that for you here. In the employee section, go into role permissions. If you do want to enable inventory for any of your roles in your business, you're gonna check off that specific box in the role permission matrix. Once you're logged in, into the POS, you will tap on the settings icon, upper left-hand side of their, your iPad screen. And depending on the permissions, you may see different things here. We're looking at basically a full permissioned role that's logged into the iPad POS here. So when I tap on manager, I'll tap on inventory. And at this point, you can actually get very granular with the role permissions for inventory on the iPad POS, uh, meaning you could potentially have someone uh, receive inventory or only receive inventory from the iPad, or you can have someone um, adjust actual costs or uh, counting when you're using the iPad. So you can really get a little bit more detailed with who's permission with what specific point of the uh, receiving or inventory process on the iPad. So once you're in the inventory section, you'll be able to search for products and update your cost price. Uh, you'll be able to receive inventory manually, record actual amounts, and waste inventory. So much like what we saw on the management console, those icons are, are being cons are, remain consistent throughout. So you have your cardboard box, your clipboard for accounting, and uh, the garbage can for damage. So when receiving inventory on the POS, if we look at the left image, you, you would be able to tap on POs and look up either a product currently in an open PO, or you can simply search for the entire PO. To search for the actual purchase order, um, the image on the right shows you tapping on PO ID number, and then you would enter in the number, hit submit, and find your PO. And mirroring the POs on the management console, you're able to review the quantity and cost. So if applicable, um, you can add a vendor invoice number, choose whether or not you're ready to close uh, the receipt of items. And then once you're done, you tap submit. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty easy to, to wrap up POs uh, when you're receiving inventory from both the management console and the iPad. Oh, one thing I did want to mention here, there is, I, I, a little bit earlier I mentioned the inventory app. That is a separate app you can download for your mobile device. The iPad, or I'm sorry, the inventory app does use the camera that's built in to scan the item. So you can use it, you know, the device as is, or you could use the potential uh, Bluetooth barcode scanner if you have, happen to have that peripheral. All right, and moving on to RMAs here. So RMAs, or return merchandise authorizations, are used for when you need to return products to a vendor. And now you can accurately track that through this section here. Um, pro before this feature was built, um, clients had to waste inventory, which wasn't accurate. So this way, being able to track an actual return without wasting it is uh, more accurate here. So once again, I am in the inventory section. You will tap RMAs, and it brings you to the RMA section. A lot of what RMA, the RMA section looks like is similar to our purchase orders. So when I click Create New RMA, it will allow me to choose for which vendor. And then I'm taken to the, the form here, which looks similar to the PO. So we'll add the items that need to be returned, the quantities, etc. One thing to keep in mind here is that you do need to receive items that you want to return. Otherwise, the system will not allow you to create an RMA um, because it'll seem as though you didn't 
have or you don't have any items in stock. And then once you're done with this, you would just save this form just like you would with the PO. All right. So going through this RMA section. So I'm in my RMA list. Once again, it does look a lot similar to the PO section. And we have a couple of status, statuses here. So you will have uh, a save or new. And you'll, it'll save any changes made to the, to the RMA here. You'll be able to look at approved. So the approved status will indicate that the vendor has agreed to accept the return merchandise. And sent indicates that the return merchandise has been sent. Once the RMA is in the send status, the item, then the items are taken out of product inventory. Closed or paid indicates that the return has been received by the vendor and the vendor has issued a refund. So Revel reduces inventory depending on closed RMAs. All right. Going into product level settings here. So if we look at the product details of a specific product, there are inventory options that you can search for and toggle on or off for that specific item. So relating to inventory, but on a more minute scale here. So we're, we're going from broad, all-encompassing inventory down into your product level. Where am I exactly? So in the breadcrumb here in the upper left-hand corner, you'll notice I'm in, the, I'm in my products menu, and I'm in a breakfast category, subcategory burritos, and my product itself, the one I actually sell to my customers, is the egg, sausage, and cheese burrito. So when I go into the product details of this product, on the left-hand side, I can check off just inventory, and that will allow me to see the inventory options I have here on the right-hand side. So depending if you do want, you know, you have some one-off items you want to specify the inventory options for, this is how you would do it. Think about thresholds, the primary vendors, uh, reorder unit types, default reorder prices, default reorder quantities, uh, conversion rates as well. Um, th most of these things you can tackle in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet, which we'll go over in a little bit. But once again, if you do want to get just for one specific item, you can go into the product details of that product. Uh, when navigating inventory settings, and this goes for, for any settings really, when you go into settings, the first thing I always tend to do is click clear selections first. Because by default, you're looking at what the system checks off for you. And technically, they're, I think they're supposed to be you know, most commonly used settings. Um, but for this, for this case here, when I go into settings, and I know I just want to look at inventory settings. I click clear selections. That makes a clean slate. And then I just filter for, in the search bar here, inventory settings. And then I'm able to check off what I want to see. And that way, it just simplifies the view for me. Um, if you're not familiar with this navigation, the other thing I wanted to point out here are the question marks next to each setting. Hovering over the question mark, and this goes for any setting within settings, it gives you a tooltip of a little bit more detail of what this setting actually does. So obviously the, the label may not always be hugely indicative of what, what, what will happen if you turn this on. So always check out the tooltip. And of course, if you need further detail, check out the support page. All right, before I go into 225 enhancements, let me check back with questions here. Thanks y'all for your patience. Sandy's question was, is there a way to merge duplicate vendors across all establishments? I don't believe so. Uh, David, David has a question kind of relating to prep recipes, so I'm going to hold off on your question, David. Liliana is asking, is there a way to use your own purchase order number? I want to say no, but let me confirm on that one. I, I do think for purchase orders, it is the system automatically generated one, but I'll have to double check on that.
Campbell asked uh, for receiving inventory on the POS as a possible to search by open PO. This search from, from what I've tested is, is only on the ID number itself. So you're right, it is, it is a little clunky in that respect. Um, you do need the PO ID to search for that PO. Keith is asking, does, does the RMA reduce inventory depending upon closed or when sent? Uh, let me check here. Uh, to answer your question, Keith, the RMA, when an RMA is indicated as closed, that is the point when Revel will reduce inventory. Miles is asking, what does uninvoice mean and how do we fix it? So that is in reference to the PO. So to give you a visual here, uh, bear with me one second while I go back. I think this is the best one I have. So when you when you're looking at your purchase orders here, so after you receive the PO, the system you know indicate uh, knows that you've received the items, but it has no invoice number to reference unless you input the invoice number. So after you've, you've received inventory and you click on the actions button here. If you look at the upper right hand corner of the, the PO that's been received, there is an empty field that's waiting for an invoice number. If you put in the invoice number that you, re you received from the vendor, that will change the status of the invoice to invoiced. Or if it was a partially invoiced or a partially received item and you have at least the first invoice for the partially received merchandise, that it would be partially invoiced would be the status. Um, and then finally, if you hit finalize on that section, it'll finalize the invoice. So just to reiterate, to fix the uninvoiced, you have to go back into the PO and input, input an invoice number. All right, let me go back to where we were which was enhancements. Okay, so I alluded to this a little bit ago when I was talking about inventory role permissions on the iPad POS, um, but it was actually a 225 enhancement. So the inventory permission used to be very broad. So if you had the inventory permission uh, on, the, on the iPad, you could do everything. But now, we've broken it down so you can actually turn on and off certain parts of the inventory process on the iPad. So both the both administrator permission, I'm sorry, uh, the role permission. So you can set by specific action. So one person can receive inventory, uh, one person can reset cost, another person or role can mark inventory as damaged. So you can get very granular with it. So on the right hand side, that's where you see inventory actual, inventory damage, receive, update cost. That all pertains to the front end. On the back end or your management console, I know this is a little small um, screenshot here, but under inventory, you have the permission here. You can create the permission set for the management console on the right hand side. So for ingredient import and export enhancements. So we've actually beefed up this Excel file, the spreadsheet file. Um, it is a little bit more clear on what you have to do to get this to function. So you have those instructions for you there. It also indicates what columns are required. So name, unit type, barcode or SKU, and then the active status. Active status is defined as a yes or no. So you just need to input one of those things.
Um, you'll also notice that you can create unit types now upon order. So prior to this spreadsheet, you had to go into the inventory section and click, or I'm sorry, the ingredient section, and you would, there's a little obscure scale icon. It's still there. You can click on the scale icon and add in a custom unit type one by one. But obviously with the spreadsheet, it's a lot more convenient. So you have here um, in my example, my unit type, there's liter, box, pound, spray, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can add new unit types here, upload it, and, this, and the spreadsheet will then um, add it into Rebel. All right, so a more clear uh, way to upload ingredients with the import-export function. And now we have prep recipes. So um, there was a question related to this a little bit ago. And with this new feature, um, this is for those of you who create batch recipes. So this is the accurate way to track them. Previously, the only time inventory was reduced was when a product was sold at the point of sale. When in reality, the inventory should deplete when the items are used to create the recipe, right? So the solution to this is the prep inventory feature. So what you're looking at here first, if you notice the breadcrumb upper left-hand corner, I'm in the products menu, I'm looking at my category, my subcategory, and then my product is dark chocolate. Just like you would build a recipe for any other product, the difference here being we've added prep inventory and recipe yield to the recipe section. If you don't see it right away, just be sure to check it off on the left-hand side and then you build your recipe as normal and you would indicate it as a prep inventory recipe. So if I turn this prep inventory on for my dark chocolate, the item won't cascade at the point of sale. Rather, it'll be prepped, brought into inventory ahead of time. You run the recipe when you actually create the item. So when you're creating a recipe, once again, just check the prep inventory box and then you'll see it in the prep recipe section when we go into that next. So a prep recipe can produce many items for inventory. So you'd input the recipe yield as you see at the bottom of the screen. So in this case, my recipe yield will be 12. If I ran this recipe, it would add 12 complete dark chocolate bars or whatever I'm making here to inventory and deplete the, the ingredients. So as a recap, in prep, or I'm sorry, in the product, I've created the recipe. I've indicated it as a prep recipe, and once I do, I go into inventory and click the prep recipes button. When I click the prep recipes button, I see any recipe I've defined as a prep recipe be listed here. Okay, so at this point, I'm ready to prep my dark chocolate. I click the prep button, and I'm given three options here. So by default, it'll open up into the original recipe option, which is at the very left. And then you'll also have projected input and projected yield. So running these recipes, one of the three ways. So the original uh, recipe option, uh, you can select how many times you want the recipe to be made. So you're essentially controlling how many batches you're making and it will affect the yield amount. The middle screenshot here for projected input, you're running it based on a particular ingredient amount. So for the dark chocolate here, um, I can choose to make the recipe based on how much milk or chocolate I have on hand or the, how much I want to use. And it'll calculate and adjust the yield accordingly. The last option on the right is where I can run it based on how many items I want to yield. So I'm working from the end result. So in this case, I want to I wanna build 30 bars, then it'll spit out the recipe of what I need to take out from inventory. Okay, so the other fields that you see, they're all editable, so you can input these fields. So if you use more than expected or don't yield as much as you expected, the difference will be marked as waste in your inventory. So this will really help in uh, tracking waste and tracking how ingredients are used for final products in your recipes. Uh, emailing POs, this was actually a fix. Uh, you may have noticed it if you use the PO function heavily. We've taken out that bug where when you finalize the invoice, it would prompt you again to email the purchase order. That no longer happens. Uh, it truly will just prompt you for the email when you hit uh, send PO. 
We've also added the shelf edge label printing function. So the difference you'll see is when you're in your product section and you go into your products menu, on the left hand side are checkboxes. There's no label on what these checkboxes do. They are meant for the printing of the price labels. So whatever I check off on the left, as indicated by this red highlight here, whatever I check here, I can then print the price label. When I first saw this, I honestly confused it a lot with the active column when I thought I was deactivating or activating products. So just be sure if you're looking to activate or deactivate, you're under the active column. Otherwise, if you want to print something in terms of shelf edge labels, you'll use the checkboxes that are located to the left of each of your categories. One thing to note here is that the it basically creates uh, like a like a sheet of labels. So the intent is that you're printing them from your desktop to go to your desktop printer. And I believe the label format is like a standard Avery label. So it won't print, for example, from your Dymo or Zebra printer. You want to be sure that you're using this from the desktop. Uh, for our retail clients, we've, we will also introduce the product price life cycle cycle. I'm, I'm sorry, product price life cycle feature. Uh, and what this does is it allows items to start at full price. Then based on the day or the calendar you set, the price will change. So it could drop by 10%, 30%, 50%, and finally be deactivated and taken away from the menu. Uh, prior to this implementation, it was a very manual process. Um, it involved a lot of exporting via spreadsheet, changing prices, and re-uploading via spreadsheet. So it was very time consuming. So we were really excited to in introduce this feature because it did save a lot of time for our clients here. So uh, you can definitely set these changes in advance and then it'll transmit the changes to the POS. Um, the POS will start using the changes as soon as the set date and time is reached. Um, just to reiterate, you can also schedule the activation and deactivation of products. So you don't have to do it one by one from the management console anymore. And to access this tool, it is located in the products menu. Notice here I'm on top screenshot, I'm under products. Fourth option down is product price lifecycle. So to take a deeper dive into functionality here and what it looks like when you go into the product price lifecycle, uh, you would click add product price life cycle, cycle action and it opens up some fields so you can choose which product and what actions you want that product to take over that designated amount of time. So if I'm looking at the top screenshot here and I want to change up, change, change up my jeans and sweatpants options, you can change the price of the product on the selected date, that's the point of the start date. Then you would enter in the new price in the price change field. To make the product active or inactive on the product list, you would then select active or inactive from the drop down menu there. So based on this, uh, my sweatpants starting on the 1st of December at 12 a.m., I can indicate a price change and it'll become active. All right. Once an action has been configured and you've added it in, down at the bottom here, you'll notice barcode, SKU, vendor, and original price automatically populate with the relevant information. Right? You also get the visual indicators here as to what is active or inactive. You can filter the product actions on the product price lifecycle page in different ways. So by default, the main drop-down filter at the top right is set to future right here but you can change it to all or a custom date range. With this feature, you will also see an additional field when you go into the product details of your product, which is current price. And this is obviously a static field that's being derived from whatever calculations have been set. So uh, the current price in this case is 10 bucks based on the you know, 9.15 product price life cycle action I had set. Right, so that's the PPLC. Percent markup. So percent markup is also a new feature that allows you to calculate the price of a product based on the cost. 
Keep in mind, it does not react to live inventory cost, only static inventory cost when you enter it in yourself. So you'll see a percent markup field that's been added to the additional fields drop down list on the products export import page. And it's now supported as a product export import classifier. So you'll see this on the spreadsheet uh, when you're dealing with the import export for the products. So, I mean, just to sum it up, the functionality sets a product price percentage higher than the cost. So whatever percent you put here. Uh, we also have added in reorder to par. So this functionality will allow you to reorder items or products contingent on the par level. So the par level is defined as the minimum quantity of a given item that your business wants to keep on hand. So if enabled and the, the item's actual quantity falls below the par level, you'll get an alert from Rebel. You will go through the reorder process and the product will appear automatically on that PO with the amount that needs to be uh, ordered to reach your par level. So if you want your par level at 10, you're down to seven, you get an alert, the PO would say three. So you can get back up to par. Physical inventory was also a huge enhancement that was added in and enhanced for the 225 release. So the, the uh, inventory management system now supports the physical inventory function, which basically allows you to divide a retail store into sections that can easily be broken down and then inventoried. So each section is provided a number and you, your business or store would associate, I'm sorry, um, yeah, you would associate the sections with the uh, employee that's going to count that section. And then once they're counted, that'll funnel over into the back end. So it's kind of, you know, you have real time reporting on, on what's being counted. So what we're looking at here is the back man or the management console or the back office view. So on the left, I've created my sections of my store. So I have uh, four sections here that I want my employees to count. And then on the right, in the inventory section of the management console, I've clicked on the physical inventory button. And that takes me to this screen here. Okay, so I, I know what I'm counting. I can start the physical inventory and label my sections. So now my employees go out to count my, my inventory. And let's say they're using their mobile devices. So I have the screenshots here, what it looks like when you're using the physical inventory on the inventory app from your mobile device. Um, you, you can use it on your iPhone or your, I mean, iPod Touch, if, if those still exist. Um, but also, I, I have tested it on an iPad. If you go to the app store on the iPad and you search for the inventory app, but change the filter to show all rather than iPad only apps, you'll be able to download this. Keep in mind it is optimized for a phone, so it may look smaller, but you can maximize it on the iPad, so it just it's a little bigger. It doesn't look any wonk, it doesn't look terrible or anything. But I find I personally find it easier um, you know to, to manipulate the screen on the iPad because it's a little bigger. All right. So this is what it'll look like. Uh, when you tap scan so I can start my, my count, I'm, I'm going to start in my section on the left, and then I start scanning on in the middle screenshot there, so I scan however many items uh, I find for that particular product. And on the right, there's my full count of all of my items and the quantities that I've counted. Tapping on that specific product you've scanned will allow you to edit the quantity, so if you made a mistake, you can always go back in and edit, edit the quantity. If you swipe to the left on any of those products, similar to the order screen on your iPad POS, if you swipe to the left, you get the option and it will reveal the option to delete, much like the text on your phone or your iPhone if you have it. So this is just, I wanted to show you here, um, the physical inventory app does also support both multiple units and serial numbers. So on the left here, it's saying, hey, we found multiple units, is it a case? What do you want to do here? And then serial numbers, if you scan, you know, if you're an electronics store, gaming store, you have a console that needs to be
be associated with the serial number, you can also scan the serial number. If a product cannot be found via barcode scan, the unknown products dialog message will be in red, as indicated on the left-hand screen, left screenshot there. And if two or more products have identical barcodes, multiple matches found dialog will appear, the uh, second screenshot here. If the product has multiple units of measurement, the multiple units found, as I just showed you, will show up. And I mean, all in all, we know that this was this was a huge ask from you guys and a lot of our customers out there. So we're just really excited to have it out there and and have you guys use it and make inventory counts, you know, a lot less cumbersome. So if I go back to the back end now, these are the results from my inventory count. My employees went through, they counted everything that, that I, I designated. Now if I go into the back end, I can see the sections and then I can expand each section to look at the products and the variances and I can accept if I want. Okay. Wrapping up inventory here, I do want to highlight again the new and improved knowledge base with Revel University. The webinar is being recorded. It will be available there as well as all of our how-to videos that are, um, as we speak, being updated as well. So you get um, updated and brand new content. So, so stay tuned for that. Let me go back to our questions here. Uh, okay, uh, Miles, it, if you're if you're not able to go back into your PO um, because it's been finalized, then you cannot change the invoice number because it's been finalized. You'd have to make a note on that one. Uh, Dan's asking, how do I change the recipe actual yield measurement label? I think, Dan, are you referring to the unit of measurement that is visible when you're looking at the yield? Because that, that is indicated when you are creating the Dan, okay. You know, off the top of my head, Dan, I have to double check. I have to look at the uh, my management console here. Debbie's asking, can several app or inventory app users count the same section at the same time? This is in reference to physical inventory. If they touch the finish at the top and error, how do they get back to continue counting? So for to control th that portion of it, you can initiate the account again, like a second count from the management console. So that's done from that end. Um, as far as several several users counting the same section at the same time, I want to say yes, you can, um, but Debbie, I'm actually not super familiar with that part of the physical inventory, so I'll have to double check on it. Keith is asking, does a physical inventory app require scanner hardware? Technically, no. You can use the camera that's built into the phone to scan the barcodes. Otherwise, if you do want the handheld scanner, it's a specific Bluetooth scanner that is listed on our website. I'm still here, guys. I'm just reading some questions that I hope I can answer right now. Um, David 
is asking a few questions here. So one of them is, can prep recipes when making a batch be run using the iPad POS? The answer to that is no, it needs to be done from the prep recipe section in the management console. Uh, the other section here, can prep recipes be used to create ingredients, not products? Uh, in a way, yes. So what I would say is like, let's say for example, I use Alfredo sauce as an ingredient in my recipes, but that Alfredo sauce is also comprised of a recipe of, you know, milk, cheese, butter, whatever. I can create a recipe for that sauce and then that could be its own prep recipe. And then that Alfredo sauce as a product can also be part of the pasta dish in the end. And that can also be part of the prep recipe. So it kind of builds upon itself. And you can do that. The, second, the other part of this question was, um, if prep recipe is not turned on, but a recipe is still specified, Will the ingredients in this sub recipe? Oh, I see. So if if prep re if prep recipe is not checked, and you still have a recipe uh, defined for a particular product or ingredient, once again, the in nothing will be taken out from inventory until that particular product or if that ingredient is part of a product is rung up on the point of sale. So for accuracy, you want to be sure to have prep inventory on. Otherwise, once again, it, nothing will change in inventory until it's sold at the point of sale. So David, I hope that answers your questions. All right, so um, I don't see any other ones coming in, but if, Debbie, if you wouldn't mind, actually, for any of you that I, I wasn't able to answer your question, if you could email training at revelsystems.com, um, that way I can have a record of it and respond to you guys. Um, for Debbie, I wanted to double check with my product manager on um, having multiple users use the inventory app because I'm not sure myself. Um, for Dan, I might be able to check right now. Uh, hang on one second. I'm going to check my management console real quick. Oh, um, so Dan's question was about uh, how do I change recipe actual yield measurement? Um, in this case, I believe you have to go into the stock unit conversion of that product, and that would change the label there. Um, Dan, if you if you could also email training, I just want to be sure I, I follow up with with the. Uh, exact answer for you. Let me see here.
Going back to Liliana's question about uh, custom PO numbers, I do want to say it is the automated PO number you have to use. Yeah, for now, Leon, I'm going to say you do have to use the, the automated one. If you do email training at rebelsystems.com, um, that will have it recorded so I can get you a for sure answer. Uh, Keith is asking, what about just entering the physical count values manually rather than scanning? Um, Keith, at the top of this middle screenshot there, if you type into this search field, you can manually type in the barcode, or I'm sorry, the item number if you don't use barcodes. Matt is asking how to get the physical inventory option to appear under inventory. Um, let me double check if you can. If not, you'll have to reach out to support. You should be able to turn it on. Um, Matt, are you able to confirm what version of the management console you're running? Because I believe it should be on for you. If not, if you look in the back or the settings section of your management console, you can filter for physical inventory. And if you look at if you're looking at my screen here, these are settings that you should be able to see as well. Um, if you still are not able to see it at that point, I would call support just to be sure that um, make sure everything on your management console is turned on for that. Debbie, uh, I, I do see your other physical inventory question. Once again, that's that's one I'm not familiar with. It, it has to do with classes. Um, if you could email those to training, um, I want to be able to try to get you an answer. Okay. All right, so it looks like there's no other new questions coming in. Um, please email me for those of you I indicated if I was, since I wasn't able to get you the exact answer. Um, but thank you so much for attending, and we'll see you next time for another webinar. Have a great day.